It's the top of the afternoon. Hope everybody feeling good, feeling great, feeling blessed. Now you know, before we get into the video, we got some business we need to handle. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you be notified when I drop brand new videos and letting y'all know what's going on out here in the world of trucking or dropping a motivation video. But anyway, let's get into this video, y'all. So, y'all seen the last video about my brake chamber while well, my brakes locking up and smoking on me and everything like that. Let me go with my phone because I got to pull it up. Um, so, what happened was, it happened about 4, 4 o'clock, 4.30 central time. So, I called the TA for Rose South Service. The TA I was by, Whites, Whitestown, Indiana, I was like 12 miles away from that TA. They told me it was gonna take five hours for them to get to me. So the, the lady at the desk said, oh, I can call another TA and see how long it would take for them to get to you. So she called the one in, I think it was Clayton, Ohio. I think that's what it was on 70. They said three hours. So I was like, all right, let's go with them. So I was on the shoulder three hours and I was sitting on the phone doing the time so the three hours they didn't seem like it was three hours to me um so he comes gets up under the truck and everything like that brakes is stuck to the drum um so he had to use a like a crowbar to apply pressure on the slack adjuster to get them to you know push them and get them up off the drum and stuff like that and then take the pry bar up under the brake like in the corner of the brake to try to pop them up so because i was standing out there with him while he was under the truck i was standing there holding my flashlight even though he had the magnet one up under there so just to give him extra light plus i want to see what he was doing and everything like that so he got the brakes loose the back brake chamber on the passenger side was the one that went out. Went out. It was letting air out. So he had to back the brakes up off the drum on uh, all the drive axles. Then the back brake chamber, he had to disconnect the airline, fold them in half. I gave him some zip ties. He had zip ties also. I had some zip ties. So I gave him zip ties to, to fold the, the airline so the air couldn't go through so he was like all right get in the truck turn your air on let's see so it kept seeping out so he had to fold the airline and then twist it again and then zip tie it to keep the air from coming out so he backed the brakes up he said my front the, the drive axle the front axle of the drives when I went to the shop, they didn't back my brakes up off the drums enough, is what he told me. The back brake chamber went bad. So, he was like, all right, you're going to have to get up here to the TA. You're going to have to go in the shop. You're going to have to get the brake chamber replaced. So, I'm like, all right. So, after, I don't know, how, I, I like 4, 4.30 so what, maybe 8, 30, 9 o'clock when we finally moved. So the only brakes I had was the front brakes. Sorry about that. The front brakes and my trailers to stop me. So he riding behind me and everything till we got to the TA. He went in the shop with me. He said, hey, uh, he need a new brake chamber. Anybody here to do brakes? And of course, no. So I'm like, damn. Now I gotta sit here in the morning, get on the list. Who knows how long it's gonna take them Saturday to do anything. I have to deliver that load Monday. So I'm like, all right, here's what it is. I was like four and a half hours away from my delivery anyway. So the dude from Rosa Service, he's like, yo, you know what? I'll do your brake chamber. So he told them to give him the brake chamber. 
So he had to get the brake chamber and he was like, I was like, all right, we found the spot where I parked, dropped the trailer, disconnected. So he got the brake chamber. I, I pulled from under the trailer, lined up in the parking lot somewhere where he can work on it. And I sat in the truck and kept my foot on the brake so he could chalk the wheels. And he went under there, took the old brake drum off, put the new one, readjusted all of my drive out two brakes. And got your boy up and good to go. So I'm like, all right, you know, how much is everything? So I think came to $474. So, I gave him $100. Like, yo, put this in your pocket. You know what I mean? Because he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that at all. He could have been like, all right, you know, I got, got you off the shoulder of the road. And, hey, now you got to go in the shop. So, that could have been, I had to pay $474 to the TA over at, um, Clayton, Ohio. Hold on. Hello. I'm doing the video. What's up? What you mean where I'm at? I'm in my truck at a truck stop. White. What is it? White something, Tennessee. I'm on 65. The broker called me and they was, I told them like my clock was not going to be back up until about 3, about 3, 3.30. So he was like, all right, I'll tell them 10 o'clock tonight. I don't know. The broker said 10 o'clock. He was going to tell him I'll be there at 10 o'clock. And I haven't spoke to the receiver. Call the re I think it's best to call the receiver. So, let me see the number on there. Hold on. I don't see no number for that receiver. There ain't no pay. There ain't no number on here, so I have to Google it. All right. Yep. Sorry about that, y'all. That's the office. But anyway, so where was I? Yeah, so I paid the other TA just. $474 for the roadside service call and him coming out. I threw the $100 in his pocket because he did my brake chamber in the parking lot when he ain't had to and readjusted my brakes. So at the end of the day, you know, I appreciate that roadside service, man. I told him, I said, if I ever come through that TA in Ohio and I see him, I'm like, yo, if you got time, lunch is on me. You know what I mean? Like, Cause he didn't have to do that, you know what I mean? And I, I just, I gave him the hundred, you know what I mean? Like, yo, I went to the ATM, yo, put this in your pocket, man, thank you. Cause you ain't never have to do that. So he looked out for me. So it worked out, it worked out in my favor. It worked out in my favor. Um, it's trucking, y'all, it's trucking. This is what happens, you know what I mean? This is why I'm telling everybody, be proactive, don't be reactive. If you get you an old truck, start thinking like, I don't know what the last person did when they had this truck. You know what I mean? So I want the truck to sinister standards. You want your truck to your standards. Don't worry about what everybody else got to say about what you do with yours. Just like I seen people that told me, yo, Sam, you should cut your losses. No, I'm not going to cut my losses. I already dumped a lot of money in it. I'm almost done paying off my truck. 
And then, okay, let's say if I do cut my losses and go get another truck, that don't mean I'm not going to run into issues with another truck. I'm not going to go get me a brand new truck and then have a sky high payment that's going to take me, what, three and a half years to pay off? For what? For what? You know what I mean? But that's their opinion. They entitled to their opinion. Nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? But I do things according to how I want to do things. The way I want to do it. So, I'm like, everybody want to call me when I'm doing a video. Um, I'm like, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. My path travel is not your path to travel. What somebody else will do with their truck is might not be what will work for me. It might put me even more in a hole. It might backfire and don't work. Then again, it could work. Who knows? Everybody has different situations that result in different outcomes. Period. That's just what it is. You know what I mean? And I'm like... I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Everybody entitled to their opinion. I put the video up. Of course, it's going to bring the people who's critics. Hey, everybody entitled. I'm leaving comments out. I'm not I'm not taking no comments down. I don't care what people say. I'm comfortable where I'm at. I'm comfortable with my skin. I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. This is my truck. I'm going to work on my truck the way I want to work on it and learn. That's just what it is. Can I, can I learn? Even if I, if, okay, you're going to take a loss with something. But how, how are you going to learn if you don't get no experience? How are you going to know what to do when you get another truck if you don't learn from your first truck? Period. Here go the broken call. Let me wrap this video up, y'all. But that's what just happened. It's your boy, sister. Leave your comments down below, and I'll holler at y'all later.